the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. It is good to be worshiping with you this morning. To those gathered near and far, welcome to Wicker Park Lutheran Church. Please know that wherever you are on your spiritual or religious journey, you are welcome in this community. To help you best participate in worship this morning, you can find our a bulletin by following the link on the screen or by using your uh, QR code, using your phone and your camera to, uh, your camera and your phone to scan the QR code on the screen and that will also take you to uh, the bulletin this morning. If you don't use the bulletin, you can um, follow along on the screen. We will have all of the responses and the music and the scripture uh, on the screen as well. But for now, I invite you to make a sacred space around you, perhaps by lighting five candles on your Advent wreath that came in your communion kit, along with gathering bread and wine that we'll be using for communion. Then put away distractions like your phone and take a deep breath as we begin worship together this morning. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, last week we began a new lectionary cycle, a new year where we are focusing on the Gospel of Mark. Last week, we also had a much better preacher than I, Bishop Curry, and as he started off this new lectionary year, he brought our attention to Mark's words saying, keep alert and keep awake keep awake and be ready keep alert and look for the time then today we quickly jumped all the way back to the beginning of the gospel of mark back to the beginning and even before jesus's ministry began we went to the very first verse of the Gospel of Mark, which read, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. Good news. It's a phrase that Mark's readers would have known and heard, and it might be similar to make America great again, or build back better. You see, Good news comes from the Greek word euangelion. The Greek word euangelion. And this Greek word is also where we get the word gospel. And euangelion is also used by the Roman Empire to describe the agenda of Pax Romana. Okay, quick pause. Does anybody no, or have you heard of this term before? Pax Romana, anyone? Yes, no, maybe. You can put it in the chat, anything. Tell me, no, okay. Well, anyway, either way, Pax Romana roughly translates from the Latin, Pax Romana, to English to mean Roman peace. It describes about 200 years of relative peace and stability for the Roman Empire, which began around 27 BCE. And in the Roman world, euangelion referred to the good news. But it was the good news of the peace brought by the emperor. Peace that led many to believe that the emperor was a god. Peace that turned into the worship of 
the emperor. Okay. Well, that was a nice little history lesson. But why in the world does that matter? Well, you see, the first words of Mark's gospel are clear that the peace being described is not the emperor's kind of peace, the Pax Romana. It's not the empire of Rome's type of peace. In fact, Mark is going to contrast the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome, with the peace of Christ. Mark is going to reveal to us the beginning of the good news. And, and notice, it's not the complete revelation, but it is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, the first readers of the text would have known how the Roman peace began. You see, after the end of the Roman Republic came the Roman Empire. And it was the Roman Empire that ushered in this supposed peace. Roman peace was built on law and order and security. Roman peace was brought about by the emperor having complete control and extreme authority over all of the governors and lawmakers and patrons and magistrates. And at this point, Rome had become no longer the constitutional republic, but rather it functioned as an autocracy. Now, Roman peace was not the absence of war. Rather, it was the situation in which all of Rome's opponents were beaten down and had, been, had lost all of their ability to resist. And, and this this was true of the context that, that Jesus was living in. After all, Jesus found himself in a place where he was living in an occupied territory after the expansion and the domination of the Roman Empire. So too, well, the, the Roman peace was achieved on the backs of the poor, the marginalized, the oppressed. Roman peace was achieved through military might by taking what Rome needed at the expense of all others and by taxing to build up the empire. You see, Roman peace was achieved through fear, through political loyalty, and through brutal, absolutely brutal humiliation. This, all of that, that was the emperor's good news. And frankly, we see the same things today in the American empire. We see political parties of all types driven by loyalty instead of what is in the best interest of its citizens. We see a long history that has come about by all different types of political backgrounds, a long history of military expansion that started from the very beginning, when the beginning of America was built on the slaughter of First Nations. And then continued into global expansion, and so too, our American empire, has politicians who use fear and control to bring in the masses. We watch the economy in our daily lives, which are often built upon the essential work of the working poor and the marginalized. And you see, the thing is, as we participate in all of these systems, as we work to get our holiday gifts at the absolute cheapest price, while being unaware of or ignoring, the trickle-down impact to the poor. 
we allow the land and the air and the water to be destroyed for silly little trinkets that we will throw away and fleeting feelings of superficial community, we support political systems that are steeped in loyalty and cultivated by fear, we keep the status quo in this area or in that area because ultimately many of us, especially in America and the Western world, we benefit from these systems. You see, the Pax Romana well, it may be from a long time ago, but it still serves us well today. But Mark shows us the gospel of Jesus Christ. Good news that harkens all the way back to the prophets. Good news that might actually not feel like good news to those of us who find comfort in the Pax Romana. Rather, the good news seen in Mark is God's good news shown throughout the scriptures. It's found in today's reading from Isaiah where the author, while in exile, yearns to be back in Jerusalem. And from that social location, Isaiah consoles God's people. Isaiah reminds the people that the inequality, it will be leveled. That those who are held high, well, they will be brought low. And those who are low will be lifted up. That the places where trouble is found will become peaceful. And the difficulty of a winding road will be resolved. You see, it's a vision from Isaiah that sets the stage for how we will see John the Baptist and ultimately how we will see Jesus in Mark's gospel. For God brings a way that, albeit difficult, a way that is good and right, and just. And through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we too can embody what it means to live in Christ's peace. For Christ's peace feels like dying to the rich and the privileged. Christ's peace looks like rejecting violence and pride. Christ's peace prioritizes acts of love and service. It's a peace found by, well, losing some TV time to instead write letters to detained immigrants so that as we slowly do this and as we write, we work to lift up those deep valleys. It is peace found through financial gifts to the church and to our ministry partners so that we might bring those mountains of privilege just a little bit lower to make them more equitable for all. It's peace found in advocating for the straightness of bureaucratic systems that unnecessarily drag out help for the hurting. It's peace found in comforting the terrified as they flee persecution. It's peace found as comforting those who mourn many losses. It's peace that is found in bringing comfort to all those who suffer. All right, friends, I am going to leave us here today. You see, for this Advent season, we are given an opportunity. An opportunity to help prepare the way for Christ's permanent and pervasive peace. We have been reminded to keep awake and to keep alert. To look for opportunities to turn away from the worldly and Roman style of peace and instead turn towards Christ's 
peace. And each time we gather here on worship live stream or physically in place, we pass Christ's peace. And notice it just a little bit later today. And it's, it's not just a time for intermission or a time to run to the bathroom or time to chat. But rather, as we begin to pass Christ's peace, we begin to participate in Christ's peace. You see, it is a time when Republicans and Democrats and independents level the ground with one another. It is a time when rich and poor and middle-class folks begin to smooth over the injustices of Pax Romana. You see, it is a time where male and female and intersex and trans folks all gather together to acknowledge Christ's peace that shows no partiality. And with this seemingly insignificant act, we train our muscles, our muscles of peace, to participate in what we believe and what we preach. We begin God's hard work to level the mountains of racism and nationalism and discrimination. We begin to straighten the roll, roads of partisanship and of privilege. And we begin to prepare the broken road so that we might prepare the way for Christ. To prepare the way for Christ's peace. And that, my friends, that is the message of the Advent season. Namely, that we have the opportunity to join in preparing the way for Christ's never-ending reign of love. A love freely given to you, to me, and to all of creation. Friends, truly, this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a voice in the wilderness crying, a call from the ways untrod. Prepare in the desert a highway, a highway for our God. The valley shall be exalted, the lofty hills brought low. Make straight all the crooked and sing, proclaim to a desolate people the coming of the King. Like flowers of the fields we perish, like grass our works decay. The power and the pomp of nations shall fall.
Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for those individuals who are one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome today as new members into the life and ministry of this congregation. Today, we welcome as voting members both Steve and Rebecca. As we welcome these new members, Together, let us confess the faith of the whole church. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. and the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, Rebecca and Steve, this is an exciting day. It is a day that oftentimes is filled with excitement and possibility and expectations. And on this day, this is the day that I want to remind you of our collective humanity. For there is only one thing that I can guarantee to you today, and that is that at some point, you will be disappointed. You will be disappointed by something stupid that, that I say or do, and I do that quite often, or you'll be disappointed with the decisions that the council makes, especially in this unique time of living in a COVID world. You will begin to realize that Wicker Park Lutheran Church is not the perfect faith community. But that's the thing. Us as Christians, we... We acknowledge our imperfection. We are not God. We are just here participating in God's work. And so right here today, as you begin your membership with us, I invite you to decide right now today, decide today if when you become disappointed, if you're going to stay or if you will go. Now, if you go, that, that is your own choice. And we hope that you find a spiritual and religious home that can be nurturing to you. But if you do go, I'm concerned that you might miss out on something beautiful. You might miss out on the ways that our God comes into the brokenness with grace and love. You might miss out on the way that God continues to transform us as disciples. You might just miss out on the ways that in our brokenness, God comes to us. And you'll miss out the reminder that in baptism, that is the place where we truly receive God's love. And so today, you are reminded that in baptism, we were welcomed into the body of Christ. We were sent to share in God's mission and that we are called to live together among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of Christ in both word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And so today, Rebecca and Steve, as you become members of this church, you declare your intention to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people 
in this place at Wicker Park Lutheran Church. And now, people of God, on behalf of this congregation, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Well, then let us welcome these siblings in Christ into this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together, we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. And as we give thanks, wherever you are today, I invite you to give a round of applause for our two newest members. And you wouldn't become a member of Wicker Park Lutheran unless we gave you a little bit of Wicker Park Lutheran Church swag. And so we are going to send you one of these little swag bags with some goodies, um, Rebecca and Steve. And this um, is hopefully a way that you can show off your interest in the ways um, that you are continuing to participate in God's striving for justice and peace in all the world. And as we continue together as God's people in the church, let us pray as one body of Christ. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission, especially in Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. Hear us, O oh God. He is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. We pray especially for those impacted by racism, stigma, and the COVID-19 pandemic. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression and gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue in their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Also with you. Today, we invite you to live into Christ's peace by either sharing a sign of peace with those around you, uh, sending a peace using the chat box on your screen, perhaps calling or texting someone. And it may even look like making a note to yourself to call someone later today. For now, let us pass the peace. Well, it is good to be worshiping with you today, and especially to those of you who are visiting with us for the very first time, we want to extend a special welcome. We, I also want to draw your attention to our digital connect card, which you can find using the link on your screen, or again, using the QR code, which you can scan with your smartphone's camera. At that Digital Connect card, you can have the opportunity to check off that you are a, a visitor here. And we always like to reach out to our visitors, and I, I, I love to grab a, uh, something to drink and chat on Zoom or on the phone. And we'll even um, send you a little gift card so that you can get a drink on us as we continue to build community and connection in this time of uh, physical distancing. Now, even if you're not a first-time guest, we want to get a chance to connect you with a lot of our ministries, and that Digital Connect card is the place to do it. It's the place um, to RSVP for some of the exciting things we have going on around here, like on Thursdays, where we have um, an opportunity to gather together, a very short 15-20 minute time of prayer, and gathering together as God's people. So that's most Thursdays at 6 o'clock. You can also get a chance to learn a bit more about ways that you can help with our, our free little pantry. Um, we can also get a chance to talk a little bit more um, with either myself or with um, Vicar Bethany in a spiritual chat. And there are so many other things that you can do on that digital connect card. So get a chance to check that out, again, using the link or the QR code on your screen. And as we continue in the Advent season, um, I, I want to invite uh, Vicar Bethany to share a little bit more about what we have going on in the weeks ahead. Thanks, Pastor Jason. Well, you may have heard that this Advent, WPLC is reflecting on the theme of our migration stories. And so continuing with this theme, this theme I just wanted to highlight a few things going on this week. First, if you haven't yet written a letter through our letter writing project, there's still an opportunity to do that. Uh, we are accompanying immigrants in detention in the Chicagoland area by writing a letter or sending a holiday card to them. And these are folks that otherwise would have little to no contact with the outside world. In the midst of a pandemic, it's a creative way to affirm our commitment to the least of these in our, in our city, in our communities, and uh, to affirm the humanity of the individuals that we're writing to. If this is something that interests you, you can follow the link on the screen right now or, or write to me and we'll get you more information. And whether you've written a letter or not, and whether you've RSVP'd or not, we invite you to uh, an event today right after service. Uh, we'll be having a conversation with Elise Smith, a program director at ICDI. Uh, the Interfaith Community for Detained Immigrants. Um, and we're going to together explore the importance of this letter writing project and um, have a great conversation there. And so, um, again, that's today, right after service. We'd love to see you there. And lastly, 
um, I'd like to invite you to uh, help build a resource list of medical, legal, and pastoral resources for any immigrant in need that walks through our door. If you're interested in contributing to that, you can follow the link on the screen to get more information. And this is something that we'll be working on the next few weeks and we'll have on hand at the church as a community to accompany anyone in need that may walk through the doors. And it'll be important in helping us to live out our immigrant welcoming commitment. So with that, um, I hand it back to you, Pastor Jason. Thanks, Vicar Bethany. And as we um, continue the, in this Advent season, uh, it will come to an end um, as we get into the Christmas season. And I want to get a chance um, to um, announce that we will have four Christmas Eve services this year. So we will have a 3 o'clock and a 4.30 that are going to be our children's service. So it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be about 30 minutes long. Um, there is not going to be communion. There's not going to be a sermon. But there will be um, an opportunity to kind of engage in the Christmas story and hear Christmas songs. Now, if, if that's not for you, then you can join us at either 7 or 9 o'clock for our traditional candlelight service, which will have, it'll feel like a normal kind of Sunday service with a sermon and, and hymns and, and all the goodness that kind of comes with the Christmas season. Now, for both of these services, we're offering um, some, some special kits. So either children's gift kits for um, the children's services or a uh, candle kit for our two evening services. And so on um, our webpage, wickerparklutheran.org forward slash DEC24 for December 24th, um, or in the e-news, you can click on that and get more information about all four of those services and ways that you can um, sign up for one of those free kits. In just a few moments, we will gather around God's holy table. We will gather to have a meal to be filled up and fed so that we might go out and bring Christ's peace in this world. And so if you don't have something to eat or something to drink yet, um, go ahead and get that. Ideally, it would be bread and wine. But what we know is that, that at Christ's table, uh, Christ had bread and wine, and, th and that's why we celebrate with those so often. And we also know that this has always been a virtual communion table. It's been a communion table where we gather together with all of God's saints of all times and places. So know that you are welcome at this table. No ifs, ands, or buts. And as we have an opportunity to gather at this table, we also just pause briefly before, not to pay our way to the table, but rather to give of the abundance that God has already given us. And so we have the opportunity to give of our offerings. Um, you can give electronically, um, either by PayPal or using our preferred site. And all of this money um, it, that is gathered together, we give a portion of that to our ministry partners across the city and across the globe so that we can enact peace, so that we can bring about Christ's peace in the world, that we continue to live in the hope that the Advent sings and brings us for a time when all will be fed, for when all will be seen as equals, and for when God's justice and peace can reign across the earth. So I invite you to reflect on the gifts that you've already given, or to give using the gift, uh, you give using the links that are on your screen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. And so with all of the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. For on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And then he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all those gathered there, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people through the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this cup often in remembrance of me. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh within us. For all praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now gathered by the Spirit's motherly care, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. 
Friends, now as we are gathered together at this table, I invite you to take the bread or whatever you have to eat and know that this is the body of Christ given for you. And then to take the wine or whatever you have to drink, knowing that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now, as we have been strengthened by this meal, we go off into the world to share Christ's peace with Christ's blessing. May God direct your ways in peace. May Christ's life encourage you to abound for love for all people and for all of creation. And may the Spirit strengthen your heart until the full revelation of Christ's abundant peace. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way for the Lord. Thanks be to God.